This video was actually inspired by another YouTuber named Rachel Maxie. Maxie. My dyslexia is killing me. Anyway, Rachel does amazing uh, recreation costumes. I love what she does. She does all sorts of things. And when she gets into the makeup and the clothing and everything, it's absolutely wonderful. She did uh, one video. It was inspired by the Met Gala and the Getty Museum challenges where you recreate something. She was also inspired by Peter Braithwaite. Um, I'm going to link her video down in the description. But I really loved what she did with vintage advertisements. And when I saw that, I'm like, oh, I have some of those posters. I have almost all of them. But I had one that she didn't have. And I also had a skirt that I needed to hem. So I decided I would kill two birds with one stone and make a video, an homage to Rachel's amazingness, and also show you how to do a quick hem on a skirt using a serger overlock machine and quick top stitching. I love this skirt. And I think this is going to be the skirt that I'll use with this uh, particular adaptation. However, it's too long. And I'm not just saying for that. I mean, it's too long on me. This is one of my longest skirts other than a pencil skirt, which I have that's almost ankle length. But this one, it stops right at the thick part of my calf. Now, I think I have pretty decent looking legs, but whenever a skirt stops at the thickest part, it looks like it's thick all the way up. So to defeat that optical illusion, if I just take it up two and a half inches, it will stop just where my calf starts curving in, just below the knee, still be an attractive longer black skirt without being at just the wrong spot in my legs. And uh, I think I'm gonna not bother with a, buying a wig or anything like that, but I can probably get that sort of poofy hair all on my own. And then all I have to do is figure out the uh, high-necked, all-black shirt, which might be a man's shirt. I think I can do this. Once you know how far up you need to hem it, go around the entire edge of the skirt with some tailor's chalk to just mark that down. I sometimes start the cut with a pair of scissors and then take it to my serger. Because I surged not directly on the chalk mark, but just a little bit south of that, all I need to do is turn over my serging till it's just barely over and then top stitch it down. Like I need to have a heart, just like the Tin Man. 
And uh, then I need swords. I've got some things that are sword-like, but not any uh, fencing swords. So, yeah. And uh, I'm doing this sort of Edwardian hairdo because I just could not get this poodle thing to happen with my hair. I'm not a hairstylist. So yeah, I think this is gonna work. I've never tried to film myself in the bathroom before, and the best I could do <laughs> is to be looking into the mirror at the camera. Ah, hope this works out. Okay. By the way, cool theater costume trick is if you need to keep your hair out of your way because you're going to style it later and you don't want it in your makeup, or if you uh, can't get a wig cap very easily, thigh high stockings with that little elastic on the inside. Once the stocking gets a run in it, cut off the leg, use it for something else, and then you can take that stocking and you've got a really nice wide headband that really holds your hair back. You can pin it to that lace if you need to then put a wig over the top, put a little bit of gel uh, to keep the little wispies out of your way if you need to. I'm not going to need it that much because I'm going to be actually using my actual hair instead of a wig. Now I've done some pretty crazy makeup in my time and one of the things that is very important is to start off with sort of a blank canvas. So use your concealer, then uh, do a foundation and set that before you start trying to make yourself into a character. I decided to be extra, extra accurate in my 1900s uh, makeup because I decided to use a minimal number of brushes and my fingers for most of it. Remember, up through the 1920s and even into the 1930s, makeup on women was not very commonly accepted and it was something that you did sort of on the sly. You didn't let people know that you were using a blush or a lipstick. If you had nail polish, you tried to keep it as neutral as possible because only the painted ladies did uh, outrageous colors. So uh, though makeup became more popular over time, uh, it was something that uh, you didn't have a lot of tools for because it was supposed to be just an enhancement of what was already there. Now, looking at the close-ups, the blush is right up underneath the eyes up on the sides, almost in a, a theatrical kind of way. So I had to do a few changes to what I would normally do for makeup so that it actually matched what was on the poster, not what I would normally do for myself. I did decide that I was going to do the hairstyle. And so I par portioned my hair and then slowly tried to figure out how to get weird little loops of hair to circle around my face similar to what was in the original. Now, she may have actually had her hair bobbed and cut short, but um, I think at, in the 1900s, most of the women would have had long hair similar to I do, how I do, and uh, they would have just put it up in a strategic way should they have a sport that they needed to do. Okay. Heart held on by friction, love, because I don't have a helmet. And she managed to elegantly hold three swords and I can't even hold two sides in one hand. Okay, that one there, that one like that. It's just how it's, how it's gonna be. And now through the magic of photo manipulation programs, my interpretation. Thank you to Rachel Maxey. I hope that's how you're supposed to say her name. Uh, she was really an inspiration for this. Thank you to everybody who participated in the 
Dress at Home Met Gala Challenge and the uh, Getty Museum uh, Recreate an Artwork Challenge. I'm going to try to put everyone's credits down in the description, but if I mess up or forget somebody, please just put that down in comments. I almost never get comments, which means I pretty much read them all. So if I've offended somebody uh, by leaving out credits to whoever they were, uh, my apologies. Just correct me and I'll fix it. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.